I've often hear stories about myself that uh, I'm a genius or I'm mad or I'm drunk or I'm on drugs or um, uh, I'm incoherent. I, I, I've heard several times that I'm dead. <laughs> uh, one woman came up to me uh, recently and said, did you used to be R.D. Ray? <laughs> So I uh, 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 votes on whether I'm uh, a genius or mad or uh, or dead or alive. But I, I sort of leave to other people. <laughs> I remember one uh, particular cat who came along, he was absolutely suicidal, tremendously depressed, and in the deepest depth of despair came along to see me for an initial consultation. And uh, I I've developed the uh, therapeutic I idea that, that, that uh, it is not necessarily a good idea if you're in prison, in a dungeon, say, uh, to, uh, and the door happens to be open uh, to adopt the policy I'm not going to walk out of this state of affairs unless I discover how I got into it forgotten how I got in here but I'm not going to walk out until you, you know, I work out all the reasons uh, I got into it now that is not a, a, doesn't necessarily help you to get out of it to find out how you got into it it might be useful but it often isn't. So I will say then to someone who's absolutely well, when was the last time you remember ever being happy? Or, or is there anything that you can scan in the last 24 hours, the last 48 hours, go back as long as you like, when you last felt okay? So I adopted this policy with this guy instead of going into all his family history and all his, what he did, blah, 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 so I got him onto what he enjoyed. You go for a walk and whistle. Whistle. His favourite tune or something that occurred to him. He, he'd forgotten that uh, he could actually whistle. You know. So, so we, got, we get into a sort of rap about this at the end of uh, uh, 50 minutes. He was, uh, we were, we were changing jokes, his favourite jokes, and my favourite jokes, and uh, uh, so I suddenly, you know, said, well, it's 50 minutes, it times up. And the guy was like, ah, and as he got to the door, he, he, he suddenly went, <laughs> and sort of remembered that he had come see me because he was suicidal and he was de de depressed. And he started to object that he hadn't had his money's work. <laughs> he hadn't spent a time going into his depression. I, I, got, I, I said, you've had 50 minutes with me, if you, if you're, uh, and you're not depressed now. Uh, don't you think you might sort of go away and think about what happened between us and, uh, it, so, such that you forgot about your depression for a bit? And you, uh, uh, you know, if, uh, the best way to keep depressed is, think of, is to keep on thinking about your depression. You forget yeah. it, if you can.
And if you can't forget it, then all right, we'll have to go into it. <laughs> Most of the people we meet are likely to be very, very frightened people whose uh, so-called negative symptoms or positive symptoms or uh, um, tokens of uh, criteria of their disorder are defenses that they're putting up. Uh, against their fear so they might actually be so flipped out they're not aware that they're frightened but we know that they are so one of the things that one can at least do is to conduct oneself according to the ordinary ground rules of courtesy uh, politeness and ways of showing the other person that you respect them as another creature and that you are not going to do anything to them that they don't want done to them. And even then, one's probably not going to do anything uh, to them. One's harmless. Uh, that is not immediately apparent to the other person. And it's no use saying, I'm harmless, because the most harmful people say that. You know, trust me, uh, give me direct eye contact. You know, I, I never trust anyone who asks me to trust them. <laughs> the way that we attend to each other, the way that we treat each other, the way we treat each other is not reified as uh, pills and things, as treatment, but uh, our, the treatment that we give someone is the way we treat that person. It should not be a noun, it should be an active uh, verb. So the way we treat one another is the therapy. having many friends. I don't remember a single friend of my father or my mother ever coming round to our house in the whole of my childhood. I don't remember ever being taken to anyone else's house by either my mother or my father outside of the family, ever. I can remember vividly when I was about seven or eight, the first time I was ever in someone else's house outside of the family. I, uh, a boy in my class at school, I went to his house and another house, another world. Uh, amazing to me. So I've had a, I think that sort of childhood that I had is obviously sensitize me to this uh, area of life more than maybe most other people are sensitized to this area. So it, uh, it occasions me uh, maybe the greatest consolations that I've had in life and the greatest uh, pain that I've had in life have been in relationship to other people. I felt for years as a child uh, in my immediate circumstances of living, I, 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 I uh, did not find uh, uh, among my fellow children or the adults around anyone uh, who was a companion spirit, fellow spirit. This, of course, made me wonder whether there's something the matter with me or something the matter with the world, or is it just one of those things? Does everyone feel like that but don't talk about it? Or is it just me? And so forth and so on. Well, music, more than anything else to begin with, was 
uh, a connection with the heart of humanity. This is a control over the way people, our style of actually perceiving the world. Even though we're not breaking the law in any way in, in terms of the way we actually conduct ourselves, there's not, nothing criminal about our behaviour. Our state of mind is regarded as uh, undesirable and should be put a stop to. I gave a lecture uh, a few years ago at the Berkholtse Hospital, which was the uh, ho hospital outside of Zurich where schizophrenia was first invented. Uh, uh, professors and medical staff, junior staff, were banned from the lecture. It was being too sensitive for them to be exposed to the... Uh, uh, be corrupted by the uh, revolutionary and dangerous thoughts of Dr. Lane doesn't doesn't um, bother me to the extent of really getting me down, but it's an uncomfortable uh, position to find myself in and uh, uh, a potentially dangerous one for me. With us on signature, Scottish-born psychiatrist R.D. Lang. Is there a phrase or a single word or an experience that you think is the best way for us to begin to look at your position? If, if I can take a single word, uh, I would uh, prefer to call it suffering. Suffering and confusion, misery, consternation, bewilderment. Consternation, bewilderment, dreadful, hellish states of mind that people get into, so they're so paralyzed by their fear. Uh, people are afraid more than anything else, I would say, of other people. Children and other people sometimes get on the other side of being socialized and so on. They become frightened not of cats and dogs or of the sky falling down or falling through there. They become frightened of other people. They become frightened of human beings. Now, if you're frightened of a human being, you, you, you cringe. Now, if, if I start to be frightened of you and start to cringe, and if I become so frightened of you that I feel that really it's terrifying to say anything to you, then I'm, I, I'm cringing, I, I can't make a move in relationship to you, and I can't say anything. So from a psychiatric point of view, I'm suddenly a mute, catatonic, schizophrenic. So I, I get a guy coming in to see me, and he stands in front of me, and he, he's absolutely, he can't move, and he can't say anything. Now, from a psychiatric point of view, I can sort of write, you are a catatonic schizophrenic and you need, need electric shocks. From a human point of view, you are a guy like me who, for reasons that I don't know, but I can maybe stretch my mind and imagine, have got frightened of other people. And you're so frightened of other people. You haven't met me, but you, um, you, you, you're just standing there. So this is a guy who is frozen with terror. Now, if a guy comes to meet me who's, who's looking for my help and I realize he's frozen with terror, what I do is I behave intuitively as one human being to another in such a way that he might, um, from the way I conduct myself in the first place, not have any reason to be frightened of me because I'm you know, I tell him, you know, I can see that you're absolutely terrified of me. I've never met you. I, I want you to know that you don't have to believe me. But I'm just telling you anyway. I've got no designs on you. I'm not going to uh, put drugs into you you don't want. I'm not going to assault you. I'm not going to lock you up. I'm not going to give you ele electricity and so on, etc. Brother, you're frightened of me and I'm not frightened of you.